I'm going to ask you all to please stand so we can, we can read the word standing. Those of you who can, if, if you need to remain seated, that's fine also. Let me tell y'all something. I can't be in a gym that long wearing this all day and God not give me a message about it. Okay? So for those of you who don't understand why I'm tired and why Dexter had 150 cramps just like me, it's because yesterday we uh, refed about six games maybe. All right? And I got to tell you, I, I enjoyed it the first game. Because, you know, that first game, you're all like, oh, this is something new. This is something fresh. And I had energy. Um, by the time you knew it, I was walking. I wasn't running no more. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. If y'all had been at my house, I would have been like, what is wrong? I was like this. I was laying down. I kid you not. I got cramps on my hamstrings. 1.30 in the morning. Oh my gosh. Y'all should have heard me. Oh! Oh! I really was like that. And I'm sure Dexter was too. Probably all them basketball players were too, huh? I gotta put this on. I forgot my whistle. Y'all don't have to hear me blow the whistle. Yes, sir. All right. So this has everything to do with today's message. Hopefully, this message um, stays ingrained in your spirit, in your heart, um, because of the uniqueness of it. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's, that, that's, what, he, that's what he preached when he had, when he had the... The stripes on. Here we go. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to begin in verse 6. We're going to go from 6 to 11. Verses 6 to 11. I'm going to be reading, reading from the NIV. All right. Now, by, by now we know that, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and empty. Um, and, you know, we know, he said, let there be light. So we're at, we're at verse 6 now. And look, look what he does. He says, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Can you say the word separate? separate. That's going to be important. Separate. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. Can you say, gathered? Yeah. Now say, separate? separate. Gathered. Yeah. That's going to be important. Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land. And the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 11. Then God said, let the land produce. Now say the word produce. produce. So first say separate. separate. Gathered. gathered produce. produce. Okay. He says, let the land produce vegetation. Seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. Separate, gather, produce. Okay, watch that. Separate, gather, produce. The title of this morning's message is Let There Be Order. Okay, can you say it with me? Say, Let there, there be order. Be ordered. Be ordered. Amen. Let's pray real quick. Father, I thank you for this message you've given me. I thank you, Father, for challenging me with this word. Glory to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I declare that every heart that is here is good ground for your words of life. And everyone who's watching through the broadcast, I declare that their heart is excellent ground 
for what you're going to share today. And I declare that we will all be doers of your word and not just hearers of your word. Have your way, Holy Spirit. You lead, I follow. Speak, Lord, your servant hears you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let there be order. Somebody shout order. order. Yes, yes, yes. What would this world be like without order? Amen. What would it be like? Imagine our medical system, our medical field, our hospitals. Imagine if there wasn't any order to our hospitals. Imagine if there was no schedule to it. All right. We'd show up to the hospital with an emergency and there would be one nurse there and that's it. And we would ask, well, where are the doctors? This is a hospital. You're supposed to be anointed and prepared to help me with my current emergency. How come there's only one nurse? Well, it's because we have no order here, sir. We have no order. We don't have a schedule. People come when they want. And right now, I'm the only one who wanted to be here. <laughs> All these doctors that we have, apparently they want to show up later. We don't have structure. We, we haven't said like God, let this be here, let this be there, and let this be gathered to one place. And therefore, we can't produce good service because we haven't had order yet. What about a classroom? What would our classrooms be like if there was no order, no structure, no let this be here, let this be there, no schedule, no bells, no principal, just, just teachers? teachers and students but no structure what would it be like especially in high school that means that means kids kids would sit wherever they want kids would get up and go to the bathroom whenever they wanted and come back whenever they wanted how how could class be productive if order was an established first make sense are you following me are you seeing genesis here okay what about what about our restaurants what if there wasn't structure and order to restaurants what if there wasn't like hey you're going to be in charge of this side and you of that side and listen, you need to make sure that this is ready by this time. And you need to keep an eye on that grill over there. And you need to keep tabs of this. And you need to make sure the, 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 uh, the bathroom stays clean. You need to make sure that you're there ready to greet with a smile at this certain time. What if a, what if a restaurant didn't have structure and order? They wouldn't be very productive. They wouldn't provide good service. What if we didn't have any officers? Yikes. What if we didn't have a law enforcement to help implement order in our communities? Right? Especially with people like Jody in this world. What would we do? Jody, you're so awesome. But in, in order, all these things that we've gone over so far, in order for there to be productivity and for things to move in the right direction, there has to be some structure to it. There has to be order. And last but not least, what would a grown man's basketball game and tournament be like without me and Dexter trying to ref, trying to implement some order? What would basketball be like without referees? There might have been some fights yesterday, right, Dexter? 
Yes. Mm. In order for things to move in the right direction, there's got to be order. Mm. So look at this. I'm going to show you. I already showed you in, G in Genesis where God paints to us the picture that there's got to be order before there's production. Right from the beginning, I think it's beautiful that in the first chapter, he says, let there be light. And then he says, let there be order. And then he says, let there be production. Look at that order. Let there be light, let there be order, and let there be production. But we're focusing on let there be order before production. I'm going to show you where else this plays out in the scriptures. It's pretty cool. Look, in Mark chapter 5, verses 35 through 42, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher Jesus anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Look at verse 37. Look at how before he goes and raises this, this little girl, look at how he begins to implement order before he produces a miracle. Look at this. Verse 37, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, John, and the brother of James. You see that? Before he went to produce a miracle, he said, let there be order. I just need you, you, and you. Come on. You see that? Now watch this. So he says, I just need three of you. And look at verse 38. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a what? Commotion. No order. Jesus walks into a place where there's no order. And he wants to produce a miracle. Look, he saw a commotion with people crying and wailing like me and Dexter last night. Loudly. Verse 39. He went in and said to them, why all this disorder? Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. And look at what Jesus does. He put them all out. He said, just like in the beginning, let there be order before there's production. He's saying, before I can produce this miracle, let there be order. If you're causing commotion, if you're not believing in what I'm going to do, get out. Let there be order. You see that? So look, after, that's powerful. After he, he implemented order, then... He took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, if that's how you say it, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. Do you see that? Here we see it again. Order before production. There's going to be some practical application to this, and we'll get to it towards the end of the service. But I just want you to show you, I just want to show you in, in different uh, scriptures where this plays out. Look at this. It happens again. It happens again, watch. In Luke chapter 9, verses 12 through 17, late in the afternoon, the 12 came to Jesus and said, send the crowd away. Jesus was ministering to thousands. Send the crowd away. So they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we only we have only five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About five thousand men were there. But he said to his disciples, look what he says. Have them sit down in groups of about 50. Are you seeing this? He's saying, I'm about to produce another miracle. But first, let there be order. My gosh. So he says, have them sit down in groups of about 50. The disciples did so. They created order. And everyone sat down. And then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke and, and broke 
broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute. We know the rest of the story, but do you see how once again, once again, Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus, the Messiah, before he produced a miracle, he implemented order. Wow. Sit them in groups of 50. I'm going to show you one more. Look at this. In Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. And he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. I'm a ref. I should know how to do this. What, like this? Is that 12? Look at, look at this. Jesus knew that he was going to die on the cross, resurrect, and go to the Father. And he said, before I leave, I need to have some order. Before I leave, if, I, if I'm going to pour into 12 and they are going to change the world. So he calls all his disciples. He calls all of them. He had many. But out of those many, he said, I need you, 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 you. You're going to be my 12. Look at how he creates order before he leaves. And from that order he created, we know the rest of the story. Right? Those 12 changed the world. Amen. So now we're going to talk about practical application. What does this mean to our life? Okay. If now, now mind you, mind you, we have seen four different examples in scripture. First, first God, the father himself implements order before production. And then we read about where Jesus, Jesus implements order before production. Let me tell you something. If they did it, if they did it, don't you think we need to do the same? How do we do it? How do we do it? Watch this. <laughs> Applying it to our lives. Here's what I want you to know. We are expressing one of God's qualities when we implement order. Our purpose is to express who God is. Do you believe that? Do you believe that your purpose in this broken world, as long as you're here in this fallen world, do you believe that your purpose is to express who God is? And every time we help implement order and structure to anything, we are expressing one of the qualities of God. That's wonderful. So what does this look like? Well, let's say, let's say some of us want to uh, become healthier, right? Whether we want to lose weight or just, just be healthier in general, right? There's going to be some order, right? Let this food be here and let this food be in the trash. I, I, need, I, I can have this, I can have that much of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Let there be separation. Let, are you seeing Genesis? Let the, let, I can have some of that. I, only once a week can I have some Coke. Only. However you're going to do it, but there's got to be some order. I chose this picture because I love chicken and that looks good. It looks healthy. But are, are you seeing this? God, God gives us a blueprint. If we want things to go in the right direction in any area of our life, first we need to say, let there be order. We got to blow that whistle like a ref. What if, what if as a couple, you and your spouse, what if there is something that y'all want to do with y'all's finances. God put something in your spirit, right? God put something in your spirit and you say, you know what? In order for us to do what God is putting in our spirit to do, then, then when it comes to our money, this much can go here, this much can go there. We can't be spending money on all this anymore. 
We, we, can't, we, we can't do that anymore. We're going to have to make some sacrifices. Let there be. Do you see that? Look at this. So that's what they're doing. Let there be order. Mm. Now, think, think of, I don't know your business. I don't know the details of your life. But God is saying to you this morning that things can and will progress in the right direction if we follow his blueprint, which is order before production. Do we see this? Now, maybe our life looks like this. Jimmy almost cried. Jimmy, would you blow the whistle on a situation like this? <laughs> Let that be over there. Let that be over there. See, I wish I had my whistle. I would have been blowing it right now. And Todd Hill would have loved it. <laughs> what God is saying to us this morning is we need to blow the whistle where there is no order. Do you see that? Only you know where there is no order. Only I know where there is no order in the different areas of my life. And it can start, it can start with something like this. What does our home look like? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Listen, God loves us. God loves us. If our home is like this, we are not expressing who God is. So we might need to go home and get them dishes washed. I'm telling on myself. I'm telling you, he challenged me. That's why when I prayed, I say, thank you, Lord, for challenging me with this word. What is, but really, really, what does our home look like? Junior, get off this subject. No, I'm going to stay on it. When people come and visit our home, if it is in order, if there's structure to it, what we're doing is showing them one of the qualities of God. Do you see this? Is this sin? No, it's not sin. I just might trip over some things and hurt myself and take you to court. I'm kidding. Amen, amen. Listen, that's all God gave me. Anything else I say, I'm going to make it up. But I'm not in the business of making things up. Amen, amen. Do you receive this word? Short and sweet. Y'all like it? Amen. Woo, can you lift your hands up to the Lord? Can, can you say, Lord, thank you for giving me the blueprint. Order before production. Yes, yes, yes. Say, say, Lord, I surrender to this blueprint. Yes, yes, I surrender to it. And listen, listen, he sent the Holy Spirit so that we can do this. We can. We can do it. The Holy Spirit is here to empower us to do anything that God challenges us to do. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm going to play that song again. What a wonderful song to worship to, right? I'll play that song, I Will Exalt You. And if you're here and you need prayer in regards to anything, I'm going to ask you to come to the front. I'd love to pray with you. Um, that's what we'll do. I could keep preaching, but I ain't got nothing else. For those of you who are watching through TV, thank you for joining us. Yes, if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you would like to do that right now, I'm going to ask you that you repeat after me. Please, can you say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. I believe that he died for my sin, and that he resurrected. Say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Say, Holy Spirit, reign in me. 
Rule in me. Lead me. Guide me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? All right.